People came quickly and that had been in my first movie and I knew I wanted him to be in everything that I made, so I was like, Nat has to be in this. And then, uh, um, I mean, and Shay had wanted to do this before I probably even knew what the property, well, what the, you know, what the book was. So, I don't know, it was a long casting process, but I mean, we saw a lot of people and, uh, I mean, she's the one who slayed us, so I mean, that's she. <laughs> and some other guys read and uh, he it was just the ones that made us cry and made us feel something so that's why I really like to and, uh, Laura, Laura Dern is starred in like my favorite movie like Blue Velvet and uh, Wild at Heart and Rock and movies that you, most of you can't see yet and <laughs> And uh, so I met her very early, and it was done. I mean, she was she was the the mom for sure, without any doubt. Uh, and Sam, my love for True Blood. And, yeah. So yeah, the cast. Wonderful cast. Uh, and Shailene and Hansel and that. Can you talk a little bit about what you did to get ready, sort of both um, mentally and physically, to to play your parts? Uh, Hansel, why don't you start? Hell yeah, I love you! I love you! I love you! Okay, I'll talk loud. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing we had to do was read the amazing book that John wrote and really make sure that yeah, really make sure that what we were doing um, made sense in terms of the book uh, because if it you know, the book stands by on its own as being an amazing piece of literature, an amazing piece of art. So we wanted the movie to be something like that. Or, you know, if it could be as good as that, that'd be amazing. So I think, you know, we read the book and for me, try to figure out who this Augustus Waters guy is. And, um, you know, John did an amazing job describing him in the book. And then I learned a lot about him by spending time with John. And just, uh, you know, I think John is sort of like... Uh, Augustus and John are very similar guys. Uh, so spending a lot. Of I appreciate you noticing how handsome I am. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, spending time with John really made me understand who Gus was, and um, helped me a lot in, in my process. obviously the oxygen tank and, and her cannula and, and I thought a lot about it and after meeting with people who they themselves were stuck with an oxygen machine 24 7 I realized that if we were to um, accurately if I were to accurately breathe the way Hazel if she were a real person would breathe it, it wouldn't translate visually to the screen because you would have to <laughs> It, it was just it would take it would, the movie would be a, really long. So for me it was it was a it was a a, a hard sort of tricky decision on, on what scenes to play out and incorporate the breathing into and what scenes to sort of um, not forget about it but not necessarily make it as big of a character as it would be in real life. Um, and then as far as the emotionality goes, I mean the thing with this script, like, or this movie, like what Ansel was saying, is the book is so perfect and the tone is so particular and so unique, which is why I fell in love with it and I'm sure all of you fell in love with it. There really isn't any author who writes in the way that John Green writes. And um, I just wanted to, to bring a character that changed my life when I read her in a book to screen in the screen in a, a way that made justice to who she was on those pages. And um, and so yeah, I just I tried to memorize my lines as authentically as possible and show up and just listen to what was going on around me and, and react from that. And it, you're in such a lucky situation when you work with such incredible actors where every single day, you own, your, your real only job, your only real job <laughs> is to professionally listen to what they're saying because they're so good that whatever they do brings out the best in you, in, in, a, in a way, so. Thanks, guys. You're beautiful. I love you. 
talking to you, John. Uh, I, I mean, I feel I feel the same with with, with both you guys. Um, uh, it was really I, I feel so lucky to be part of this this talented group of people. Um, it obviously was an un, you know amazing book uh, that John wrote. That um, it's so exciting that it's getting kids so excited about about reading. You know, I think it's a, a great part of this. Um, and uh, for me, a lot of the characters, we, we, I met with real cancer patients, um, and I was really nervous about, about doing that because I didn't want it to feel like I was using them or something. And then as soon as I got there, you realize when you talk to cancer patients that they're exactly like any other kid, you know, any other teenager. And I talked to them, and in five minutes I was talking to them about music and movies and TV shows, just like, you know, you talk to um, anybody else about it. And then, and then for the... Just like they said, the character. I mean, I'm working with like the, the the best actors really in the world, and a director that's my, my best friend, an amazing guy, and off this such an amazing book that that presents teenagers in a, a way that's um, I feel lucky to to be a part of, and uh, and a script that was great by uh, Mike and Scott. So yeah, I'm super lucky. Fantastic. That Nat Wolf right here wore a fake glass contact, or it wasn't glass, but it was a plastic contact um, after the supposed surgery in the movie. And that is not easy to do, and you do it over and over and over again. I, I walked into the camera a couple times. Yeah, okay, I, I, I will tell a story about how my my mom, one day, when I was preparing for this role, took me out, I wore glasses, and I closed my eyes for about three hours. I spent the entire day blind. I went to grab my toothpaste, and it was Tiger Bomb. And then I almost killed myself. And then, walking down the street, my mom took me down the street, and I was totally blind all day, and then I went to a, re I went to a restaurant, and the restaurant started leaking, and I didn't realize, I jumped up, and I was like, hey, man, and everybody was like, oh, he's not blind. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of parents, uh, Laura and Sam, you guys were both parents in real life. How, how hard was it for you to sort of go in and play these roles, which is, you know, parents like that? Sam, do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I've got one too. <laughs> how would you like to start? Yeah. Yeah. My parents? We're going to sing a song for you. <laughs> Well, was, well uh, uh, John Green yes. gave us um, such incredible characters, all of us, uh, and the, the book is just the greatest gift for any actor because it tells the entire story, a story you can't um, put all of it, encapsulate into a movie, and so that was like the greatest cheat any actor could ask for, but the level of... Uh, respect and humanity and integrity he gives to the voice of young people is the same level of respect and integrity he gave these parents who are kind of progressive hippies who were kids too and one day they ended up pregnant and becoming parents and they kind of don't know how to do that like most of us who are fumbling around at parenting um, and so I think the relationship between this daughter and these parents are is with such mutual respect and it's a very different kind of relationship than you see in books and movies but something I think a lot of us share with our parents so it was really cool also as a mom not just an actor to get to explore that and um, pay tribute to his incredible book yeah, Same. I mean, we both have Ladies kids. I have two. I have like two little boys that are two and a half, and and I know they're really cute. They're really cute. Oh, they're Winston. Oh, and one of them's name is Gus, which is really yeah, Gus. Um, but uh, so that I mean that I don't think I could I couldn't have done this part if I didn't have kids because it really you know obviously that was my whole preparation you know in a sense sense for it. Um, but also, all of us, it, like when you do a movie, a lot of times you don't really see the rest of the cast that much. You sort of work together and you're not. But all of us, from the second, I know when I got there, they were like, we're going to be at this restaurant, come meet us. And we all just hung out a lot. And it really informed our relationships. And, you know, um, you know with us and Shailene, we, got, we really got to know each other well. And, and all of us, just, it felt like a family. The whole, the whole group feels like a family. Yeah, I was yeah. actually wondering uh, 
hard days on set, which I'm imagining there were more than a few. What did you guys do at the end of the day to sort of get yourself back to normal? Well, there was maybe a little wine and a little <laughs> food. I mean, among the stories. people who were over 21. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just a lot of drugs. <laughs> There, um, there weren't that many, I mean, <laughs> it's super easy for me to say there weren't that many hard days because again, I didn't have a job. <laughs> so, I, was, I, would, I would be at the end of the day, I'd be like, oh, are we done? <laughs> oh God, another great hard day of work. We would sit, me and John, at a place called BRGR, and he would sit in the seat on the couch so he could see the soccer game, and I would sit in the other seat so I could talk to him, but he was just watching the soccer game over my shoulder. So then I would just eat my burger. Nat was there too. <laughs> so I just left him out. Yeah, sorry Nat. Um, yeah, we just got... I was we... there. I don't know, Shay, what did... You worked hard, what did you do at night? <laughs> she learned her lines. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. We all went to dinner quite often though, after... <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, no, I mean, the thing with a movie like this is sometimes when there's a really emotional scene, you, you kind of have to go home, make popcorn, and go straight. I make popcorn every night. It's just a weird ritual. It's just the best thing in the world. Oh, and like made a popcorn movie. But uh, then you go to bed because you're exhausted. You know, you know when you cry, I'm sure you're pretty tired right now. Just but it like, emotionally is exhausting. So if we weren't uh, going to bed early with puffy eyes, then we were out at a restaurant. Uh, enjoying each other's company. <laughs> what they said. <laughs> um, I did. I did hear that there was a John Green cameo that was supposed to happen. I'm curious to know uh, what exactly happened to that, Josh. The John Green cameo will be on the extended edition on the <laughs> shot that just time-wise we couldn't fit him in the movie like Gus in the back of the ambulance with Hazel reading him the poem. Uh, the swing set for sale uh, where they put up the Craigslist post and um, John Green in one of the best performances I think in the movie. Uh, of all time. Of all time. <laughs> but he's, he's quite down on himself but he was quite good. Uh, we didn't cut it for any other reason other than it didn't move the plot forward fast enough and the length of time we had. So. So there'll be a version that's about 10 minutes longer on Blu-ray that you'll be able to watch either version you want. I just want to say how... Perfectly adequate. Totally yeah. usable. Yeah, the two, the two times that Josh said anything about my acting were perfectly adequate <laughs> and totally usable. <laughs> Which, by the everyone. way, both turned out to be untrue. <laughs> we'll see when the Blu-ray comes out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when uh, the producer of the movie, Wick Godfrey, called me to tell me that uh, my cameo had been cut from the movie, like, his tone was like my cat had died or something. And I was like, is everyone all right? Because, like, you know, like, I, I had heard from Shane, like, a month, because she's in the woods somewhere or something. I, I don't know what you were doing. And, like, he's like, he's like, we got to talk about something. And I was like, oh, my God, like, what's, what happened? And he was like, well, you got cut from the movie. And I was like, oh, thank God, yes! Great decision! I agree completely! I was like, oh, I thought it was something real, like something worrisome. So yeah, I mean, I was delighted because he built it up like it was going to be something actually bad. Yeah, no, I was terrible. You'll, you'll get to enjoy it on the DVD.